untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white Kalos reconstruction deck. This card is reminiscent of Collected Company. Instead of looking at the top 6 cards, we're looking at the top 7 to find X creatures or artifacts in this case as well, with mana value 3 or less, and put them straight onto the battlefield. So Kalos reconstruction wants to be played in a deck with a high density of 3 drops, so we've got a good chance of finding a lot of powerful cards, since we want to get our mana's worth of course. And then a reconstruction, unlike Company, we can also play for 5 or 6 mana to find even more creatures if we get lucky. Of course x equals 3, already reaching the limit of how many creatures we can possibly find among the top 7, but sometimes in the late game you might as well sink more mana into it. So what creatures are we trying to put on the battlefield? We've got 4 copies of a Welcoming Vampire, which can also be a great source of card advantage, 2-3 Flyer, whenever one or more other creatures with power 2 or less enter the battlefield under our control, we get to draw a card, only triggers once each turn, so if we find a Vampire and another creature with our Kalos Reconstruction, we'll immediately get to draw a card of our Welcoming Vampire, which is quite nice. Then we have two copies of Loran of the Third Path, which can destroy an artifact or enchantment when it enters a battlefield, and a lot of decks in Standard nowadays have random artifacts or enchantments, even Monorets has Mechanized Warfare, you've got the Reckoner Bankbuster and a lot of mid-range decks, and then cards like Fable of the Mirror Breaker, even once it transforms into Reflection of Kiki Jiki, we can still take it out. Then we also have four copies of Inspiring Overseer, 2-1 Flyer, gains a life and draws a card when it enters, so another great card in the grindier matchups to provide card advantage, and then a removal spell of choice, of course, a Brutal Cathar, which can exile an opposing creature when it enters. Then we also have a bit of a life gain theme in this deck, Inspiring Overseer can already gain one life, then at one mana there's a full set of a Lunark Veteran, which will gain life whenever another creature enters under our control, can also kind of pad our life total if we're putting a ton of creatures in play with our Kalos Reconstruction, then it's also a play pattern in this deck to wait until turn 4 to play Welcoming Vampire and play Veteran afterwards to immediately draw a card so we don't lose out on any value if the opponent has removal for Vampire. So the one mana creature there is also useful and then it could also be disturbed out of the graveyard but the main synergy with Veteran of course is the one with Voice of the Blessed which will pick up a plus one plus one counter whenever we gain life and then as soon as we have four or more counters it gains Flying and Vigilance and then as long as we have ten or more counters it will also become indestructible so that can also come up if you have enough creatures entering the battlefield. And then Gala Greeters is the main reason to splash a little bit of green in this deck, as it can also provide a lot of value when creatures enter the battlefield, either making a tapped treasure token, which is often the mode we're going to choose early in the game to allow us to double spell more effectively, and then we can also put a plus one counter on it to start growing it, and eventually gain two life, which can be very helpful with Voice of the Blast as another way to gain life and put counters on it. Then a four copies of Ambitious Farmhand, which will search up a Plains when it enters the battlefield, and even though our curve is relatively low, it still helps to help us double spell, keep hitting our land drops to enable our Kalos reconstruction, and because we're drawing so many cards with Overseer and Vampire, we often end up with a lot of cards left in hand, so we will be able to make a good use of that extra mana, and eventually we can also use the Coven ability to turn it into a 3-3, a lifelinker, which is another way of potentially growing Voice of the Blessed, and even though all our creatures have one or two power to begin with, to draw cards with Welcoming Vampire, of course they won't stay very small for very long, as both Gala Greeters and Voice of the Blessed can pick up plus one counters to grow larger, even Brutal Cathar can transform into a 3-3, and then we also have two copies of Catilda, Dawnheart Prime, which is a 1-1 with protection from werewolves, easy to forget, and then human creatures we control can tap to add one mana of any of this creature's colors, and we do have quite a few humans throughout the deck, Lunark Veterans Human, Good Ambitious Farmhand, and then of course Brutal Cathar, as well as Loran are all human, so we can generate quite a bit of extra mana with Catilda, and eventually maybe pay 6 mana to tap Catilda and put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, so another nice mana sink. And then a mana base is pretty straightforward, lots of green-white dual lands, including 4 copies of Blossoming Sands, since we can often play it tapped on turn 1, since we don't have a lot of 1-drops, and then it's also potentially a way to gain life and to grow Voice of the Blast, so against a red burn deck where they might have some 2 damage effect, it can be worth it to wait until we can play Voice and immediately play our Blossoming Sands to grow it up to a 3-3. 
And then we've got a forest, a Busseju can also come in handy as another answer to artifacts or enchantments. And then a Ganjo can also be channeled, offering us a tiny bit more interaction, can also get a discount from Loran and Catilda. So of course the mana base heavily skewed towards white, since we need double white for an early Voice of the Blast and eventually triple white for reconstruction. So we really want to limit the number of green sources like Busseju and the one forest. I'm not playing with King Darien, which you could also consider in this deck as a nice green-white creature that pumps a team. Not running it, since it would potentially mess up or welcoming vampire no longer drawing cards and the five man ability also doesn't come up very often usually prefer just activating Catilda to pump the whole team instead so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw our hand's got a lot of powerful late game tools and then farm hand to help hit our land drops so i'll try it is your opponent to black white Make that Mardu. And we like a Gala Greeters. I think I still prefer Farmhand. Even though Greeters is a must answer, makes it less likely they can answer future creatures. By playing Farmhand, we kind of waste our mana and ensure our land drop. So I can maybe curve out a little bit better. It's still a close call. Maybe Greeters is worth it. Make the opponent remove it. Opponent plays a Fable on three, hangs all the token. And then uh, hopefully we'll have drawn another 2-drop to play alongside Farmhand, or a 1-drop to play alongside Vampire. Yep, there's a Fable, so Cathar lines up fine. And there's our 1-drop, so now we just need a land, I guess, since we didn't play Farmhand. To next turn play Vampire Veteran. Get our immediate value. Now if a Blood Tithe Harvester shows up, that's going to be an issue. Once the Reflection transforms. Opponent with an Overseer, so it looks like Mardu Angels. And a Greeter. So, could go Greeter plus Veteran, or Farmhand plus Greeter, maybe better. Just make sure we hit our land drops. And then I'm fine offering the trade, I think, for Overseer, even though Cathar at some point could transform back. Overseer could be copied by Reflection, and uh, could also increase future Angels if Jada's involved. Opponent's got 5 mana, could see Archangel of Wrath take out Greeters. Yep. Well, we've called all the opponent's plays, pretty much. Next turn... Vampire plus Veteran. How does our opponent respond from there? We'll see. Hopefully, again, no Blood Tithe Harvester. Our land is good. So next turn we can play a Reconstruction for two. And what are we hoping to hit? A Loron to destroy a Reflection would be nice. Yeah, there's a Harvester, so can't catch any breaks. Reflection copies Harvester, takes out Welcoming Vampire. And now we're pretty far behind, since we still need an answer for Reflection. Catilda, I guess, helps a little bit, since we can essentially play it for free here. Alright, let's go for it. Alright, there's Loron and a backup Vampire. So that answers Reflection. Opponent still has a Harvester which can kill Vampire, but at least we get to draw a card off of it. And then I Ganjo. I could have channeled if I had one white mana since we have two Legendaries. Might be an answer to Archangel of Wrath, so I'll hang on to it. Opponent using the blood token. So they must have a different answer to Welcoming Vampire. Jada, that's fine. And Overseer, so we get to untap with Welcoming Vampire, that's huge. They might take out Catilda instead. Alright, we got to untap. 
So reconstruction for how much? If I do it for three, I'll still be able to play Overseer and Channel I Ganjo. So that should be good enough. And we hit Voice, Greeters, Farmhand. Voice is going to grow a bunch. And then Greeters also gets to trigger multiple times. So not a bad turn. And a Veteran. So I could still play Veteran and channel Iganjo. Um, although I wouldn't be able to play Overseer. I think that's okay since... Uh, we want to keep some leftovers to enable Vampire. And then... Don't think we have any good attacks. If Katilda gets to untap, I could also start pumping the team. Fable will eventually be a problem. And our opponent's going to hang back. Do we want to draw with a Loron? I don't think so. I will play an Overseer. I might have actually been able to um, grow the farmhand. Not sure if I had enough mana for that. Might have been one short, actually. Let's go for a life gain to grow voice. Try and get it indestructible, I guess. Find a Blossoming Saints. Okay, so that's the tenth counter, which would make it indestructible. Perfect. Move to combats, voice attacks, and then we can still activate Katilda to grow the team, but we can do that defensively. Opponent takes 12. And we also have the two farm hands we can transform. Okay, so big turn coming up. Opponent discarding Jada and a land. And I go for the throw, it's not gonna work, as our opponent's gonna find out the secret text on voice, which our opponent's now reading. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hands got potential. Can lead with a tapped sands in case we find a more relevant two drop we want to play over veteran. And then we can see how we want to sequence. There's also a world where keeping veteran to play after welcoming vampire to get immediate value is worth it. So maybe we'll just keep it in hand for now. Opponent on a Naya colored deck, looks like enchantments. Okay, let's uh, Brutal Cathar. As much as I want to Overseer to make sure we have land 4 available. Don't want the opponent on tapping with Naturalist. And then if we draw lands, go Vampire plus Veteran. If we don't, play Overseer. Opponent with a Restoration now. So Loran's going to be one of our better cards in this matchup. Farmhand can make sure I hit my land drop. Even if it's not quite as mana efficient as Overseer, probably still better. And again, hang on to Veteran. Don't think the missed life gain is going to matter too much. Hallowed Haunting is scary. So, hopefully find a Loran to answer that soon. Voice of the Blessed will be great with our veteran in play now. Although I'm not sure it's going to outrace an army of spirits. This also can generate spirit tokens, which will help grow the Hallowed Haunting. Mm, 
another restoration. Okay, I think we have to go for reconstruction in the hopes of hitting Loran. Sax so equals two. And no Loran. We did find Catilda, or we could go for double Voice of the Blessed. Uh, Catilda means these all make mana, so that's probably worth it. Could also grab another Welcoming Vampire to just draw a ton of cards. So we have options. Yeah, maybe just double Welcoming Vampire is the way to go. Find a third. So let's see, we have three mana available. So do I just play another Welcoming Vampire here? Sure. And then we're ready for next turn. I'll keep our 2-3 back on defense. All right, Harmony is going to draw the opponent a few cards here. Nothing for Restoration to get back. If Architect attacks, we can double block it with our Vampires to take it out. Okay, Teachings will draw two. And plus one from uh, Haunting, so draw three, basically. And Catilda, a 10 10 lifelink. Yeah, that's pretty big. So we have to double block Architect. Take 12. And then we need a pretty good turn. Loran's definitely a good start. So let's say we play Voice. And draw Welcoming Vampire. Then we can play Loran to destroy the Hello Taunting. And Brutal Cathar could deal with Catilda. So yeah, let's go for Loran. And Brutal Cathar. And then can we attack with our flyers? We're still at 16, sure. Opponent could of course play another Hello Taunting for all we know. And we might have wanted to tap Catilda, leave, let's say, a farmhand untapped to chump with if necessary. So we could potentially present lethal next turn with a flying voice if we gain a bit more life. So Loran and I guess even Catilda are fine to chump if necessary. Kami of Transients grows the spirits. Naturalists. Do they have a hollow taunting left to maybe give the team flying? Nope, opponent moves to combat. And uh, yeah, we'll just jump the 7-7, seven, seven, take 12, should be safe. And get to untap. Boseju we can also channel for one mana thanks to Catilda to deal with an enchantment. But uh, probably kick things off with another welcoming vampire. Find a Brutal Cathar, good insurance, and then how about a another Kalos Command? 4x equals... Let's see, I still leave enough mana to play a Cathar if necessary. Yeah, I could just do x equals 2, and that also leaves Poseidon up. Find backup Loran and Gala Greeters. And blow up the Architect, and yeah, 
our flying voice is gonna cross the finish line onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Question is how to sequence our spells. Could go turn one veteran, turn two voice, then maybe just play tap land on three. Although now with a farmland, definitely like veteran into voice, and then we can just curve into overseer. And then blossoming sands can eventually grow the voice as well. Opponent on blue white soldiers, don't really mind Thalia all that much. Now the Soldier's deck can certainly present some powerful synergies of their own if they find the uh, Sky Strike Officer, for instance, to provide more card advantage. That can easily keep up with our synergies. Valiant Veteran pumping the team, also very good. But we'll see if we can uh, assemble our own neat synergies with uh, voice growing and eventually reconstruction. A nice 2 for 1 or 3 for 1. And Welcoming Vampire is great too. So we'll hit for 5, or do we? Opponent could have a Brutal Cathar to Exile Voice next turn, in which case getting in for 5 is nice. For opponent double blocks to trade, are we sad? Not really. And our opponent takes it, so likely seeing a Brutal Cathar. So next turn go Vampire Blossoming Sands. Yep. Still have Overseer to fly over. Thalia likely to attack. So next turn we can Reconstruction for one, which is not all that exciting, so hopefully we'll find another creature to draw with Vampire. Ooh, a Sky Strike Officer is not what we wanted to see. So yeah, that's the disaster scenario. At least farmhand draws with vampire. Now we don't have any attacks with our flyers either. So really need to draw Rome Brutal Cathar. Another Overseer is not bad. I'll run it out. And then next turn we can reconstruction for two. Okay. At least Vampire can somewhat keep up with the Sky Strike Officer. The only reason for them to attack is if they have Iganjo to channel. Otherwise, I don't expect them to. Second Sky Strike, a bit redundant. But Frontliner means they can now draw two end of turn. And that's going to add up very quickly. Okay, opponent is attacking, so I'll double lock. So now Brutal Cathar destroying the second officer means they no longer have a card draw engine. And there it is. So yeah, probably just go for Brutal Cathar. Could play veteran first to gain life, although we might draw something more exciting. Could also try and get our Voice of the Blast back, but I think I should deal with Officer first. Opponent draws. They could draw again. Okay, so... Attack for two in the air. And probably pass. Keep Veteran as another enabler for Vampire later. Or do we play it just to gain some life? And I guess if we hit a voice later it will be more effective. Okay. So next turn we can reconstruction for three. Opponent has a Cathar number two. Get Officer back. So they can draw still two cards here. But they can also start attacking. Yeah, we need a very good reconstruction, hit at least a Brutal Cathar. Ideally a Voice of the Blast as well. So no blocks. Oh, there's another one. So, 
Cathar to Cathar, get back our Cathar Exile Officer. Sure. Opponent draws. Nope, they're gonna keep their creatures back on defense. And I'll play a Tide Blossoming Sands. And then Vampire for sure can attack. Still kind of a precarious situation. Opponent's got four cards in hand. If Harbin is one of them, yep, they can get their entire team flying. And uh, not sure if that's lethal. It's got to be close. Yeah, I think I have them over 20 damage. So yeah, that's going to do it, unfortunately. And that's often how this soldier matchup plays out. Sometimes they have fewer Cathars, and then Voice of the Blast can take over. But in this case, we couldn't quite keep it around. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, I think we've got a Keeper. This might be a hand where we keep Veteran until after we play either Greeters or Welcoming Vampire to get immediate value. Facing Red-Whites. Make that Mardu. Okay, play Greeters if it dies, so be it. Plenty more value coming up. And then probably go for Overseer, try and make a Treasure with the Greeters. Never mind. Okay, so can't quite go Veteran plus Voice, but uh, I'm liking Overseer, try and hit our land drop, and then hopefully next turn Vampire plus Veteran. That works. There's Fable. Can answer the token with a Brutal Cathar if we'd like. Which may be fine, and then wait a turn on Welcoming Vampire. If I play Welcoming Vampire, I'll get my immediate card, but if they answer it, then the Shaman gets to snowball a mana advantage, which I don't love. So, take the safer approach. Exile the Shaman. Attack for two. And then next turn, can play Welcoming Vampire, plus maybe even Voice of the Blessed. Although Voice, of course, better once we have a Veteran in play. Could also go for a Reconstruction, although that also benefits from having a Vampire in play already. Janna, so put onto Mardu Angel's deck. And Inspiring Overseer will enter as a 3-2. Okay. So, what are we thinking? Can attack with both. And then, yeah, maybe Welcoming Vampire plus Voice. And then next turn maybe play Veteran before playing a Reconstruction. Sure. Alright, I'll send in the team. Opponent likely just takes it. And then Boseju could be an answer to Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Because copying Inspiring Overseer would be problematic. Steel Seraph. As a 7 6, also quite large. And we'll take the hit from Overseer. So it feels like we just need a good reconstruction. Could cast one for X equals 3 and skip out on the Veteran. Means voice doesn't grow as much, so I think veteran plus reconstruction for two is still fine. And then hang on to Buseju as maybe an answer for Steel Seraph next turn. I guess we'll see what we draw for Welcoming Vampire first, maybe that changes my decision. Another veteran. Yeah, could play another veteran, grow voice, up to a 3-3. Three, three. And then still Buseju. Either Steel Seraph or Reflection. Both are kind of problematic here. Or we can just Reconstruction for two. And then hope to hit a Loron as an answer to artifacts or enchantments. Okay, hit a Brutal Cathar and another Voice. Or do we prefer Overseer? Well, let's go with a Voice. And then what do we exile? Probably 
a reflection of Kiki Jiki. So even if they answer Cathar, at least it'll take a while before they get the reflection back. And then no attacks. And then Boseju answers Seraph. Although if her opponent has more angels, we could still be in trouble. Angel of Wrath could get back Fable after destroying Brutal Cathar. Opponent channeling Abandoned Mire, but not getting anything back. So that's desperate. So we might be doing okay after all. Seraph goes for Vigilance. And we'll gladly take seven. Alright, back up Jada, just to make a 5-5. So step one, veteran. Grow voice even more. Hope to pick up more action with a welcoming vampire. Just a farmland. Okay, so take out Steel Seraph, and then I'm okay trading Voice of the Blast for Jada. What if we attack with everyone? And we would have 8, 9 going through, if they double chump, if they block profitably, meaning, let's say we trade for Brule Cathar, eat Welcoming Vampire, they would take 15 exactly, so that doesn't work. So I'm entertaining an all-out attack for sure. They could still trade for Voice, and then trade for Welcoming Vampire, take 11, 12. That's okay, if they trade for Brule Cathar instead, that's fine too. Yeah, I think an all-out attack is fine. So yeah, that's not gonna work. And our opponent's gonna find out soon enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand would have been pretty good with a second land. Now we're on the draw, so there's still the chance to draw into one by turn two with two draw steps. And then Farmhand finds another one, and we're off to the races. So maybe it's worth the risk. Opponent on red aggro. Got quite a few life gain cards in hand. And there's a land, perfect. So kick things off with Farmhand, and then I'll be able to play Catilda into Greeters. So not quite Greeters into Catilda, but that's okay. The main card we're afraid of in this matchup is a End of Festivities dealing one to all our creatures. But not much I can do about it at the moment. So I don't think I want to trade Farmhand for Epicure. Although now with the Warfare, I probably do. And then next turn I'll just play Overseer instead of... Uh, one of my two drops. Although, Welcoming Vampire is an option too, actually. It's just likely getting removed by a burn spell. At least Overseer can still draw and gain a life. And then next turn I can double spell Greeters and Catilda. If her opponent has an end of festivities, they might be tempted to play it too now. Yeah. So we'll take quite a hit. Opponent considering their next move, discarding a land. So we're taking 5 down to 6. Can't feel great about it. But now I could go Greeters into Catilda at the cost of 1 life. And then Greeters could gain 2. Uh, if I make a treasure instead, then next turn I'll have access to 6 mana. Which means Vampire plus Brutal Cathar potentially, although Greeters might still be better. So, yeah, maybe Greeters into Catilda is the way to go. Opponent might have a burn spell, considering whether or not they want to fire it off. But we'll gain two for sure. And then Catilda could also chump. Greeter is not a human, so it doesn't make more mana. And we've got a backup in hand. And if I were to take it, they have, let's say, a play with fire, deal two, which is three. Then I would just be dead, so... We'll chump.
you get to untap. So now greeters number two into either Brutal Cathar or Welcoming Vampire, I think is the move. See if they respond to this. Okay, so first off, gain two life. And then I think Welcoming Vampire has the edge over Brutal Cathar. Although Cathar can exile Swift Spear, make them answer it. Sure. Still terrified of an end of festivities, but uh, that one's going to be hard to beat. So, plus one counter. Gain two life. Since festivities would now deal two damage as opposed to one. And then I might be okay attacking with the greeters since not planning to block with it. Right, opponent had the removal end of turn, but it's a lightning strike, so that was worth four damage. Take the damage. So no end of festivities in hand. Okay, so might be stabilizing. Can play Vampire into Catilda now. Draw a game more life, get more counters. And then we're slowly getting out of the range of a and the festivities should they top deck it. And we'll gain one more. Okay, so Gala Greeters worth a green splash, I would say. Do I attack with both? Yeah. Next turn, Catilda could activate to pump the team. Second Warfare. It's kind of scary. So I could trade Vampire for Phoenix Chick. If I take it, how much are we taking? Three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, that to quite a few burn spells. If I block like so, then I'm still taking with a Lightning Strike, which would be five. I will be taking another five, so I would be dead to a Lightning Strike specifically. But I don't think I want to double jump either. Alright, so they didn't have it, although we also didn't draw anything useful. Now Catilda can activate, and uh, maybe just attack with a larger greeters, and then next turn I can attack with the entire team. Swiss Spear deals 3 damage, so maybe actually attack with a smaller greeter so we can block with a larger one, and if there's no instant or sorcery, it would survive an attack from Swiss Spear. And then next turn we should still have enough. Opponent at 11. I guess we're still a little bit short. Yeah, maybe I should attack with both greeters and then plan to jump with Catilda. And pump the team. And then our opponent's at 8. And then next turn we're threatening 7, so still one short. So it feels like we need to draw something next turn to win the game. And... uh Sure, this attack seems reasonable then. They want to pump now with Catilda since then we're out of blockers. Epicure deals three here and gives him a redraw. So that's terrifying. Opponent discards a land. That took quite a few cards. These still trade at least. And then Brutal Cathar does come into play on the Nightbound side, but we can still present lethal for them to jump, and then maybe gain two in the process as well. Alright, so we got to see our Kalos Reconstruction deck in action, and I'm pretty pleased with the result. The deck is capable of some explosive starts thanks to Voice of the Blessed quickly picking up extra plus one counters, but it can also play a longer grindy game thanks to Welcoming Vampire, and of course the namesake card. And I do think the green splash is worth it, both Gala Greeters and Catilda can also lead to some pretty fun moments. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. 
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.